Welcome to Promote Profit Publish. I'm your host, Juliette Clark. And today we have a unique guest who's going to talk about uh, Google Ads and some of the data that his company collects when they do advertising and how it could benefit authors. But before we get started, I want to direct you over to platformplanning.com. Last year, we did an event called Platform Planning Palooza, and it was $1,500. And this year, because so many people, businesses are struggling out there, we want to do it for free. So you can go register at platformplanning.com. It is November 1st at 9 a.m. Mountain Time, and it'll be about a 90-minute workshop. We've got lots of forms we want to give you and sort of a look at what, what you did this year, what got accomplished, what you didn't get accomplished, and what you want to move forward with to build your platform next year. And the best part is I'm going to teach you guys how to break it down into baby steps so you can actually get it done, because I think that's what holds holds people back the most is they get overwhelmed and then they don't either do it at all or they don't do it well. So platformplanning.com, November 1st, get yourself registered. So today's guest is Jason Reno, and he is the uh, founder of Definitive Edge Marketing and Data Accelerator. And he believes that every business deserves a chance to own and control their own marketing data instead of relying on the ad platforms. You guys, I can't even tell you what an amazing concept that is um, because you should know what your data is and own it. With over 20 years experience in marketing and sales, Jason is passionate about helping businesses grow. His focus is on finding innovative ways to leverage high intent data ensuring companies can capture, own, and utilize this valuable resource to enhance their marketing efforts and achieve remarkable growth. So stay tuned for my interview with Jason. Jason, welcome. I'm pretty excited to have you because you're going to dive into something that um, it's a little complicated and people never want to do it themselves, but you make it really easy when you do it for them. Yeah, that's a uh... Great introduction. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So let's talk. How did you get into this? First of all, because I knew you from real estate like eons ago. How did you transition from being a mortgage broker into this business, which I know you've been doing for quite a while now? Yeah, it's seven or eight years now, I think. And uh, it, I guess it, it rooted around just spending time with my kids. You know, in the mortgage business, you're trying to hold ho open houses on the weekends, you're working seven days a week, and it just didn't align with, you know, trying to spend some time with my kids. So switch from the mortgage business into marketing. I always used to joke around and say, you know, really, we're just a marketing experts. We just choose to market mortgages. So then I jumped into marketing and then I've uh, been here ever since. Yeah, that's so funny. I went from advertising and I wanted to spend time with my kids to real estate, which I think I spent not much more time with my kids into this. Um, no, not at all. Not if you want to, you know, not if you want to stay busy in a, you know, competitive kind of area, I guess. Exactly. People don't realize in real estate, like those people who make quite a bit of money are like 24 seven players. You, you really have to be in that industry. Well, and it's not so much the almost the amount of hours, I guess it depends if you have a good like assistant or TC or something, but it's really more the um the hours because you're always working the opposite of everybody else when everybody's getting off work they're like hey mr realtor can we uh you know let's talk about our loan let's talk you know let's go see a house whatever it is um so yeah it's just the hours that you have to work you know the evenings and the uh you know the weekends that type of stuff yeah it definitely is so now you are a data company you do omni channel marketing and i think for authors this is going to be a real eye opener on how to use all this so talk a little bit about omni channel marketing first like what does that entail and how how does that little pixel you use facilitate all that okay well uh great questions i'll start with the with the first one there omni channel uh, so omnichannel really means, uh, I guess, creating that spider web effect. So you're not just relying on one channel. So it would be setting up your funnels where you're utilizing data so you can target the right individuals in what we call the middle of the funnel, because traditionally a sales funnel is top, middle and bottom. So what we're seeing is we can take our data, plug it into the middle of your funnel. You can deliver your ads and offer 
We can then drive them to the website. We give you your own custom pixel that you can capture more data and then you can retarget them. Um, so really in essence, that's where would, you know, we, we take out the wasted ad spend at the top of the funnel, allow you to set up your funnel with the two stage, uh, two stage approach utilizing data. And then in terms of the, where the authors go is they're like we had talked about before we jumped on here is they're obviously trying to sell a book, but then they're typically going and trying to sell something further. Like, Hey, here's my book, but let's also, I can help you with this. I can add value here. I can do X, Y, and Z. Well, as you're selling your book or driving influencers to landing pages that you have set up or websites, however, you're selling your books or services, whatever it is, that's where the pixel comes in where we could capture that data. Um, and that's the pixel data. That's the post click data, uh, which, which you mentioned. Mm -hmm. So when you're doing that, the benefit for authors, obviously, is now we're driving traffic to this low cost item. And we've got a list, we've got targeting, and now we can turn around when we release that course and retarget those people into something else. Yeah, let's say they they get 5,000 people per month to their to their websites or landing pages, and we have a pixel on there, and we deliver back 2,500 email addresses, 50%, let's just say. So let's assume, I don't know, call it 2% converted on their website, actually purchased something. So 98% bounced away, and statistically, 60, 60 to 70% of them aren't coming back at all. But now we have the ability to capture a large portion of those non-converting visitors and now directly stream them into that omni-channel retargeting approach. So if they're running paid ads, for example, now you can take that person that bounced off your site and <clears throat> retarget them directly. And I don't care where they came from. I can take that click from anywhere and retarget them everywhere. So I can take that Facebook click and then put them into display ads, put them into YouTube ads, put them back into Facebook ads, put them into TikTok ads, wherever, wherever, uh, wherever the client's ad spend allows. But even if it's, you know, for for authors specifically, I, it's, I don't want it to seem like, oh, well, if I'm, I'm not, you know, spending money on five different ad platforms, it's not going to work. It works very effectively, even if you're just using Facebook ads, for example. And the main thing is you're going to own the data. So now, even if it's just, for example, you take the data that comes from Facebook ads and you're, cap you're using our pixel captured around 50%, you now own that 50% of the data. You can see the name, the email address. You can put, put it back into an email CRM. You can analyze the data. Where, you know, where are these people coming from? Oftentimes we can provide demographic and firmographic data. So not on everybody, but you know, what percentage are making, you know, these different income brackets, what percentage are homeowners, there's a lot of valuable feedback that uh, comes along with the data as well. So using that data, this is where it's really important, guys, your company, when you do this, they own the data. And most companies don't do that. Is that correct? Yeah, the author would own the data. So like, if, for example, if we engage with an author, we provide them the pixel, on a daily basis, wherever the author needs us to send the data, because it's a daily stream, it's all automated, um, which is nice too. So that way, once it's set up to Facebook, face, all the Facebook automations are set with, you know, sent API calls or I don't know all the techie terms to be frank, but <laughs> I, it's, it's, it's updated on a daily basis. So no, once it's all set up, nobody really has to do much. The data is there. We help the clients monitor it, you know, on a consulting type of basis where we're going to help set KPIs, see what type of KPIs we're looking for. We can help set up emails. Um, we don't just, we've been helping companies use the data for quite a while now. So we know how to use it. We know different ways to use it. We've seen different funnels and email copies and different business niches and that type of stuff. So from a consulting standpoint, we try to provide a lot of valuable feedback to make sure they get the most out of the data. Okay. So if you're an author and you're building your platform, they should start with that initial opt-in with you guys to start collecting. Would that would that be the place to start, like the uh, driving traffic to uh, a landing page with an opt-in? I'm trying to kind of walk them through how they can how they can do this. I mean, the simple answer is to you want our pixel on or technically their pixel um, anywhere that they're driving traffic from that first click to 
even down the road. The Pixel, when we're installing the Pixel, we'll tell them. So, if it, for example, if they're duplicating landing pages like we talked about in high level, right, where they're duplicating landing pages. Um, so there's a Facebook page, a YouTube page, a TikTok page. Uh, it's, you know, just xyz.com forward slash Facebook forward slash YouTube, whatever it is. The Pixel will tell you what... Um, where those clicks came from. So then you can possibly retarget them differently or, um, you know, it's just segmenting out the data depending on where they came from. Okay. So I think you guys just heard there, you can drive traffic to your website, which I don't typically do because um, I get so many referrals. But if you're going to, if you're going to target it to your website, do you want to find out how long they're staying on that homepage or maybe the sales page, what would be, you'd put it on every page and then give them data back, correct? Yeah, you wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to tell you how long they stayed on those pages. There's some other tools that you can, uh, that you can install that will tell you like, you know, how long they stayed on different spots on the website and how, you know, how far down that they went and, you know, like heat maps, that type of stuff. But um, no, the pixels, it's, it's an, I, uh, it's a form of identity resolution. So we're going to put on the pixel, we're going to, I grab the cookie crumb that's left on the website. We're then going to take it offline, de-anonymize the cookie crumb, and then um, give you the data that's attached to it. Right. So the other thing that you can really use that effectively for is looking for glitches in your funnel as well. I know we used to do that a lot. So can you talk about that a little bit? Because somebody might land on your landing page and, and probably go to your thank you, but email three inside of your funnel may have a headline that like nobody's opening. So can that, how, how can that work to give you feedback on how effective your funnel is as well? Um, yeah, well, it's going to tell you when, when the clients are clicking and help you, uh, the what we like to say is we want to close the loop and duplicate the buyer's journey, which I think is what you're referring to. Exactly. So yes, yes, you know where where did they click? Where did they convert? How can we track? Um, so for example, we we feed the data into a demand side platform. So you know for authors specifically, if the, if the author I, I don't I don't know a specific genre or something. Let's just say we can say okay, we only want to on a, the demand side platform. We only want to target people specific to this, you know, people searching these terms from the in-market data, people that have bounced off the site and look just like these people and that are into this type of genre, whatever the book is tied to. Let's just say history. I don't know. Um, so now there's a I, I, what's a what's a typical uh, genre for uh, your author? Well, we, we have mostly nonfiction books, so psychology or spirituality, things like that. OK, let's just go spirituality. So let's just say there's people searching for spirituality, people that have bounced off the website. So it's highly targeted. It's, you know, fed into the uh, it's fed into the uh, demand side platform. But oftentimes what we can do there is we can get very low um, CPMs and CPCs, and then oftentimes drive traffic, but it's intent-based traffic because it's using data <clears throat> onto a landing page or website. From there, we capture that data with the pixel, and now we feed it into the omni-channel retargeting approach. And what we often find is the demand side platform doesn't convert a lot, but it grabs attention. So it's then it gets them to the site, we capture the data, and then they'll convert on a platform that's more comfortable for them, say off of Facebook or an Instagram or something like that. Right. So when he says retargeting you guys, that the original target, these are people, like he said, that probably aren't coming back. He's putting you in front of them again. And there is a percentage that you're keeping them top of mind, basically, right? Yeah. So in a, if if one of the authors is running paid ads, uh, whether it's doing paid ads, influencers, SEO, whatever they're doing to drive traffic to a site, to sell a book, to sell a program, to give away something. I mean, it doesn't really matter what you're driving traffic for. I mean, heck, even if you want to give away something, just say, hey, come here, download this you know, free copy of this XYZ on spirituality, right? Download it for free and just drive up as much traffic there as you can. From there, you can ask people for their email address. But then if you don't, you still have the pixel there that, you know, let's just say you drive 5,000 people to a site that way. Now we're going to put about 2,500 people email addresses in your database. 
at the end of the month or on an ongoing basis because it's automated throughout the month. But by the end of the month, let's just say then, um, we're going to put 2,500 people into your database that have been to your, that you grabbed their attention. You did all the heavy lifting. You did something out there or an influencer or like I said, SEO, paid ads, whatever it is, drove those 5,000 people to your site. Um, now we're going to put tw about 2,500 people into your database for you to email remarket to if you like as well as um, put back into paid ad retargeting, depending on your ad spend budget. Right. So for all the authors out there, can you see if you do this while your platform's being built before that book ever comes out? You now have a built-in database to promote the book and then turn around and retarget again for the course. So you already have, I don't think there are many authors out there. In fact, I can't think of any who have ever come to me and said, oh yeah, I have an email base of 2,500. That's a pretty, pretty good list. Obviously you got to get the 5,000 people there, but I, in my opinion, I mean, for an author and I don't, I, I unfortunately don't know exact budgets and I'm sure they vary per author and, you know, things of that nature. Um, but what I would say, I, I think that'd be a great way. It's like, Hey, here's a free PDF, here's a free download, here's a free video, something along those lines to add value, get them there, add value to whatever you know niche they're in mm -hmm. um, or whatever the book's targeted and whatever their target is, target audiences, add as much value as possible, give something away, drive traffic to the site. Now we're capturing data for them and now we can retarget them with testimonials, some more email addresses, and then continue to add value, build trust, build credibility. And now it's like, hey, by the way, I wrote a book. Here it is for X, Y, Z dollars. Oh, by the way, you would like my book too. Oh, you know, I offer coaching, you know, and kind of take them down the funnel, but there's, uh, and it, I guess it depends on the niche. I don't know with spirituality, but it depends on what type of coaching you're doing, but there's a, a lot of competition out there, right? Everybody's trying, there's a lot of people out there trying to be a coach, trying to coach in this, trying to coach in that. Um, so you really have to build trust and set your side, set yourself apart. And oftentimes you can't do that on the first click, let's be honest. Like how how do you make a website so perfect that you're going to capture their trust? You're going to ask for money. You're going to do this. Like they're going to, you know, build credibility, deliver, deliver your offer that has to be perfect. All of this stuff for them to just, boom, type in your credit card and purchase something. It, it's just so tough nowadays to build that perfect landing page. Frankly, I don't even know if it exists. Um, and that's where the data comes in, capturing 50% of the traffic regardless. So you have that opportunity for retargeting. Exactly. And you're right about it. A lot of people, that's why the retargeting's great, because a lot of people are hesitant to give their email address these days. Opt-ins aren't working as well as they did 10 years ago. And let's face it, 10 years ago, you could have a webinar and people would click away after the webinar. I don't think they do that as much anymore either. They want to talk to you. They want to see, do you resonate with them? Do you trust? So um, that's why you guys need to start this so far in advance because there's a lot of tweaking to do and you have to give them the free stuff. They're not just going to click and buy, even if it's a book. You guys, even a $30, $20, $30 book, they're not going to click and buy most most likely until you want. Yeah, and, and if they do on the initial, and if they do on the initial click, if that half a percent to one percent do, then wonderful. You have a decently performing landing page, but then you know the other 99% that bounce away, we're going to capture half of those. And uh I was just about to say something now I'm brain farting. <laughs> <laughs> Don't we all when we get to a certain age? <laughs> Oh, trust me, it's uh, it's going downhill fast. <laughs> There's not enough vitamins in the world, right? <laughs> I know, I know, right? All those supplements. I'm, you know, uh, I'm, I'm like I'm the major brain ones at 63. I'm I'm fading fast. Um, so if we wanted to work with you, how do we find you? Um, do you have a consultation um, that you can you can do for for authors? Yeah, absolutely. We do, I mean, basically free consultations or discovery calls for anybody to see if the, we're the right fit, if the budget works out, the target audience works out, the overall goals work out. Um, and then we do a 60-day ramp-up period and our, our contracts are month to month. The budget fluctuates de depending on the client's needs. Do they just want the data automated and then consulting uh, on some, some circumstances? We do do media buying for clients. So if they need a media buyer, then um, 
possibly work that out into the budget. But yeah, we do a free no cost discovery call. Um, so we can uh, data accelerator AI is the website. We can have, there's about an eight minute video on there that explains this a little bit further for anybody that might be a slightly confused um, because it is, you know, it's it, by the time you do it's the, the simplest way to put it is you have a pre click in market data, which is targeted by keywords, people searching for your product or services that are in market for your product or services that we're going to feed into your ad accounts. So now you're marketing to a warm audience, driving traffic to the site. The 1% that converts, great. The other 99% that bounce away, we have a 50-50 chance of capturing that data and giving them the ability to retarget. And then what we, whether it's our media buyer or whether we're coaching their media buyer, we'll show them how to even take that pixel data, the people that have bounced off their site, which, you know, the first click is one layer of, or I'm sorry, the in-market data is one layer of intent. But then once they start clicking to the site, that's a second layer of intent. So now we take that data and then we'll start putting it back up into the middle of the funnel. And now we create lookalike audiences with that data because technically there's two layers of intent there versus one, for example. Right. So now we, you know, kind of what we talked about earlier, closing the loop. It's like, okay, here are conversions. Here are people that we've already got to click that we've attracted their attention. Now go find more people like that. And then obviously the one, once we get the conversions, then we start closing the loop even further. Yes. And I, a key thing you said there is month to month, because when I've done advertising in the past, I had to sign like a six month contract. Um, and, and it's just like, I'm paying you <laughs> and the spend and I'm not getting results and I'm stuck. And I think that that's key. How long would you say is reasonable if, if, if I hire someone like you? Um, is it two months? Is it three months? W when do I start seeing results? Because I know before people would say, oh, you're going to have to wait six months. And here I was like 40,000 in and seeing zero yeah. results. <laughs> so so that that's actually a great question. So what I like to say is with, with plugging in the data and being able to use the data lookalike audiences, what I like to tell clients, and it's not, always not the best thing to say on like a first discovery call, <laughs> um, but it's like I can fail faster than anybody else. And that's the name of the that's the name of the marketing game is who can who can basically fail fail the fastest to find the winners. Cause like you're saying, hey, it's it's gonna take six months. And it's like it's basically the marketing company is like, hey, it's gonna take six months for me to figure out. Excuse my language, it's gonna take six months for me to uh, to figure <laughs> to figure things out. Um and uh, figure out what ads are going to work, what offers are going to work, what headlines are going to resonate, what landing pages are going to work. Is it short form? Is it long form? Blah, 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 blah. Um, and the biggest thing is how are we going to find the right audiences? And now with Facebook and the ad restrictions, and then somebody, it's like, hey, I got a converting Facebook page or a Facebook ad account or a campaign, whatever you want to call it. But like, what if Facebook shuts down your ad account? What yep. if Facebook now limits something, says something's wrong, flags something's whatever. Now it's like 100% in your funnels in Facebook. That's like where we like to show people is utilize the data and spread it out a little bit. Drive some traffic from, de from demand uh, de uh, display ads. And what's nice with us is we have a seat on Trade Desk, which is one of the nation's largest, most reputable demand side platforms. And then combined mm -hmm. with all of our clients, we meet the minimum requirements. We've already paid the setup fees. So an author can come in and spend as little as, you know, 1500 bucks a month or so just on display ads to drive high intent traffic based off of data, based off their past visitors, et cetera, et cetera, where, you know, if they went to Trade Desk directly, their minimum ad spends, I don't even know what it is, 25000 50000 a month, something like that. Um, so that's another benefit. There's no additional charge. The author would just have to put up the ad spend. We plug in the data. The author provides us the content. And then now we can target and retarget people everywhere outside of social media. Yeah, you guys, this is this is so crucial because marketing, I, I'm sure you'll agree, marketing's a guess. You can have the keywords, you can, you can have the best design, but until you actually test it, it's not it, it's not gonna work. And so and, every, every, is, and everybody's afraid to test. Everybody wants, everybody expects somebody to hit the nail on the head and it's just, exactly. not realistic. it's just not realistic. What I like to say with the data is it takes a six month down to a six week type of um, a six to eight week type of time frame. So what we do when we charge, uh, for example, is we do a monthly month to month. Uh, we figure out what works within the client's budget, what we're providing, what they need, what they don't need, et cetera, et cetera. 
<clears throat> we come up with a reasonable monthly budget. We charge that up front, but then that gets them a, what we call a 60 day ramp up period. So they pay us one time up front. That's for the first, you know, uh, 60 days or I'm sorry, two months. So you can look at it as 50% off if you want to look at it that way. Um, <laughs> so that way we can find the data. We can start capturing data from their website. We can start auditing their um, campaigns or helping them set up whatever's necessary, whatever we're doing for them. And then that gives them a solid, you know, 45 days to see the data at work, to see my team and I at work. And then they can decide to move forward on a month to month basis from there. Now, do you, at the same time, do you guys build the funnels for them or do you just, do they have to have their funnel already built by the time they get there? No, we do. Uh, we can do a full, a full build out if, uh, if they need to. And and that's where, I, that's where it's like, everybody's like, well, how much do your services cost? And it's just like, well, depends on what you need. I mean, we have, we have some clients, we just dump all the data into a large S3 bucket. They take it from there and put it in their data lake and send it to their Facebook ad accounts and do all that themselves. Um, and then we have other clients that, you know, uh, large addiction treatment centers, things like that, where we're doing full funnel build outs on, um, you know, every single platform from TikTok. And so we have an in-house video editor. We have an in-house graphic designer because the, the toughest thing about like even running video ads, for example, on TikTok is the TikTok video format is different than a YouTube, is different than a Facebook, is different than really? Instagram. So it's like, yeah, you have to have somebody. It's, you know, somebody's like, oh, I got, you know, I have somebody that does my videos. And it's like, yeah just send me the raw videos and I'll take it from there or my team will take it from there because I don't have time to wait on five different versions. Exactly. Um, you know, my I team didn't and I know have that. a process now where we can do that or help out with that. That's so funny. I didn't know that because I only use YouTube and Rumble. I'm I'm sort of, uh, but I am, I am addicted to the Instagram reels. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, because obviously whether it's a box, I mean, TikTok's, uh, uh, you know, horizontal, vertical format, then there's the 16 by nine, then there's the nine by nine, or not nine by nine, whatever it is, I forget, I don't know, I see all the different formats flying through the Slack channels, and, um, you know, luckily, that's not my department. <laughs> yeah, no, I know, and I actually had someone on LinkedIn uh, say, I, I have to delete you, because I don't like the way you're presenting your Opus clips, and I was like, oh, okay, whatever, <laughs> doubt you were going to be a client anyway, so, um, <laughs> Jason, so if we go over to dataccelerator.ai, they'll be able to watch the video. Will they be able to schedule an appointment also? Yeah, there's they... a exactly. There's a link right there that would take them to uh, to my Calendly page so they can take a look at my availability, probably starting as recent as uh, or as soon as tomorrow, if not, uh, you know, whenever they're available. And then, yeah, book a time. They'll get sent a few reminders and we can hop on a Zoom call and... I, that's the best part of this job for me is learning about businesses, seeing what they're doing, seeing if we can make something work. And it's, you know, and and then it's not just, I guess, even like for authors, for example, as most people, it's, you know, when you start, when you start using the data and start like targeting, it makes things so much more efficient. So ad spend dollars go farther. It allows you to scale faster or, in, you know, what what I like to say is the, the word scale should be fail. So it's hey, it's I mean, it's like oh well, how fast can you scale? It's like well, let me let me figure out how fast we can fail, and then you know those terms should be intertwined, frankly, because that's what it takes is failing to scale. And um, but showing people how you can do that and how you can do it on multiple platforms is uh, is what's fun. Yeah, no, it is fun. Cap, I... cap for the data, track it through the funnel, start closing the loops and all that fun, you know, all the all the fun stuff that the big companies do that most kind of small businesses call it, because that's what I guess in this case an author really is, is this, you know, a small business. Most small businesses don't even know something like this is even available to them. Um, so opening their eyes to something like this, showing them the investment that data can be in their business long term. Because you know, somebody clicks on your site today, maybe they're not interested. But I'm assuming maybe they're going to write another book. They're going to have another coaching offer. They're going to have something down the road. So somebody that was interested today, maybe it wasn't good at time, but you send them an email in 12 months from now. And all of a sudden, they're going to click and buy your book and buy your coaching call. But now when you own the data, you can retarget these people forever, um, you know, until they're ready to, you know, what would say, I guess, back in the mortgage business, but, you know, buy or die, <laughs> right? It's just... <laughs> But as long as you're doing it in a respectful manner, like in an author's case where it's like, hey, you know, send them, put them in a monthly newsletter or something um, mm -hmm. that's adding value, something that's tasteful and ethical, giving them the option to unsubscribe and all that type of fun stuff. You know, if you're, let's just say you're driving 10,000 uh, people to a website 
and we're capturing 5,000 people. Well, at the end of 12 months, that's going to be 60,000 people in a database. So now you go launch a new book or, hey, let's just say in 24 months from now, there's 120,000 people in there. And now you go to launch a new book, launch a new coaching program, whatever you're going to do, or even, I mean, it's data that you own. Let's just say, hey, a friend's launching a book and it's like, hey, your book's kind of similar to mine. Let's, you know, let's kind of swap. Let's, you know, do you want to, you know, shoot an email or I can, I can send an email to my database, my warm database, people that have been interested in my book, referring your book as a recommendation, something like that but give me a referral code as an influencer and let me get 20% of the sales, something like that. But if you, when you own the data, you can control that. So now on top of, um, you know, trying to sell your products, now you can cross sell and get, influ- you know, referral fees or referral fees might not be the exact term influencer fees, something along those lines. Um, but owning the data would enable you to give an author the ability to do that. Give you different Thanks. ways to monetize it, I guess. Exactly. So for you authors that are listening, where this really benefits you is, are you looking for a traditional contract? Because that traditional contract, when you write the proposal, the first thing that agent that you're trying to get to sell your book looks at is your audience. And if you run the formula and we have a worksheet and I've mentioned it before what the formula is, if you don't have those followers and the book sales for them to break, to do more than break even and make a profit, they're not going to take your book and you're going to be paying for publishing. So that really is a benefit there. And they they want to see a minimum of 100,000 followers. So this is a way to start a good year before your book comes out. Um, or before you write your proposal and build that audience in advance, Would, wouldn't you say? That probably yeah, no, I, I, absolutely. I mean, if you're looking for a hundred thousand followers, I'm assuming on Instagram is what you're referring to, or just collectively um, via all social media. Collectively, they want to look at how many people listen to your podcast monthly. How big is your list? What's your open rate? Um, what does your social media look like? What is the engagement? They look at everything. But initially, when they get the proposal, I've had several literary agents tell me they look at the numbers before they even look at the proposal. And if you don't have what they're looking for to be able to sell your book to a traditional publisher, your book goes in the round file. It doesn't matter how good it is. They, they look at audience first. Well, and then, and for example, in that case, obviously, if these authors are trying to build up their social media following, I mean, once you have the data, that can be f- part of the follow-up process is getting them to follow you on social media, but then vice versa, as the social media is growing and then grows organically as people follow them on social media, it's like, hey, by the way, come over here and click and possibly purchase X, Y, and Z or purchase my book. Obviously, not everybody's going to purchase. Now we have the pixel on the, that page as well. So now we're capturing that data and taking organic clicks and getting a click to the site and now putting them in the email database where, yes, I mean, it sounds like it'd be hugely valuable for an author to stroll into a, you know, a publisher in a year from now. And let's just say it's even, and I don't know the numbers that publishers are looking for when they're looking at a decent, let's just say database, an email database, what type of, uh, what type of numbers is the publisher looking for? They're looking a lot of times for in excess of 100,000 aggregate. So between everything that you're doing is my understanding from the literary agents. So 100,000 email database, social media following. Yeah, all of it, all of it together. But the other thing that's part of that is when you're organically growing the social media, you need to get them into your list because Mark Zuckerberg owns Facebook. And if you're like me in 2020, I was just deleted one day. So I lost my entire. Well, I get, that, that's the whole point. Yeah, that's yeah. the whole point to the omnichannel presence and then exactly. owning your data, right? Yeah, you just proved, you exactly proved my point. <laughs> <I did. laughs> Did have just said that to start off the call? <laughs> oh, sorry, sorry. Yeah, I was one kidding. of those bad people who made some comment and and got deleted. But my, you my, know what? My partner, my partner Alvin, did it. Uh, it got deleted twice for yeah, some stupid, uh, stupid comment online a couple of times. Yeah, I I did too. So, but that's why you want it. And I had been working to transition all of my social media into my list far beyond that. So, uh, you know, before that, so it didn't really impact me other than I figured out I was allergic to, I'm not allergic, uh, addicted to Facebook. Cause I was like, Oh my God, I can't, I can't get on. I'm shaking. Um, but that's, that was the whole point. And I had seen that that was from an experience, you know, with MySpace, 
one of my best friends had a magazine to subscribe to over 300,000 subscribers and she didn't get them into her list. So when MySpace went away, she lost her sponsors. She lost, she lost everything. So I, that was an early yeah. indicator, but that's exactly what Jason's talking about doing as well and why you need to do it. Well, and so let's just say as an author, figure out a way to get 5,000 people to a website every month. And I'm not saying that like, hey, it's a piece of cake, like everybody should be able to do it with the blink of an eye. I don't, I'm not trying to downplay it by any means. It would probably take some paid ads, like some investment in some paid ads, something along those lines. Um, getting people to the website where we put, where we put the pixel on, um, let's just say you get 5,000 people there and we're capturing 2,500 email addresses. Now you're strolling into your publisher in 12 months from now with 30,000 email addresses. We're not saying, hey, we have followers, people that might have accidentally followed a bot, whatever. We have a list of 30,000 people that we send a monthly newsletter to that gets a 33.3% open rate. That's nine plus thousand a month, give or take. I think if it's 30,000, right? Something like that. Um, you know, about a 9% open rate of people that we can grab their attention every single month and deliver our product to. We now, obviously, that 30,000 people in the database, now you take that and show them the rest of the numbers with the social media following, things like that. But in my opinion, and I, I don't know how a publisher looks at it, but in my opinion, having the email addresses, the database, people that are opening up emails, watching your YouTube channel. I mean, once you grab that attention, and the thing about the Pixel too is it's uh, it's personal email addresses. So especially from an author standpoint, you're not sending them at XYZ company that you know people are going to switch companies every six months, that type of stuff. It is their uh, it is their personal email address. So you're hitting them at the at the Yahoo at Gmail things of that nature. Yeah, no, and that that is so crucial to do this. So you guys, you can find Jason at dataaccelerator.ai. And if you're at the beginning stages of writing your book, I have a conversation because this is the way to build up that audience and get that proposal or, you know, get whatever you need for your next steps publishing. Jason, thank you. Yeah, what I just want to say real quick, even oh. if uh, an author listening to this, even if they don't think they're ready, I'm more than happy to do a you know, 20, 30 minute discovery call because a lot of the time what happens is I can give them a couple ideas where if they implement it now or think, you know, kind of think with the end in mind, like, okay, at the at the end, I want to plug in the data here, here, and here that might change some things during that build process. Um, and even if it's what I like to say is, you know, I'm not trying to close anybody or do a one call close or whatever. It's like, Hey, let's do a discovery call. And nine out of 10 times, you know, the client's not going to be ready. Sometimes 30, 60 days, sometimes three to six months down the road, depending on where they're at in the process. Some clients obviously ready right away. Um, but yeah, we can meet now, put a plan in place. And even if you're not ready for three to six months, that's okay. I, I would actually recommend that you guys do that because I know that many of you get, uh, many of you guys get into this and you have no idea what it's going to take to build a platform budgetary wise, build a platform, publish, and then market the book. So it's good that you have your numbers in advance so you can budget and figure out, you know, what you can do and what you can't. Jason, thank you so much for being on today. I appreciate you having me. Uh, really, I'm really glad we connected on, uh, on LinkedIn there.